Welcome to the Sound Exchange Direct registration video. I've got Philip Holmes here, a singer songwriter that I've worked with who is getting signed up to Sound Exchange for the first time. Now, Philip has already released a, a handful of different songs and, and an EP uh, through CD Baby, and some of them have been reported to Sound Exchange and some haven't. So, we're going to go walk through the differences there and how to make sure you're getting all your royalties from Sound Exchange because it's a little bit more complicated. First thing to know is that Sound Exchange collects digital public performance royalties. So those are generated from internet radio stations, places where you can't just pick what song you want to stream. That's called on demand. On demand is like Spotify and Apple Music, that sort of thing. But Pandora or iHeartRadio, you know, you can pick a mood and a style and then it acts more like radio where you don't get to decide exactly what song's going to play next. Sound Exchange also collects from satellite radio, so Sirius XM. So if you're getting any streams on these platforms, the royalties come in here, and then they get paid out. Now, the royalties get split in two, kind of like how PROs work, but for different people. The sound Exchange is paying the rights holder, so whoever owns the copyright to the master, that's 50%. And then they're paying the artist directly, which is 40%, 45%, and then non-featured artists collect 5% kind of unusual, but that's just how it's broken up. So basically this is for people that own the master side of things, generally the artist or the artist's label, and then whoever owns the recording, again, the artist or the artist's label. Where this gets a little bit confusing is if you've distributed things in the past with CD Baby, it used to be their process that they would distribute it to Sound Exchange. Now, Sound Exchange, you don't go stream music there, but they would send it to Sound Exchange. And the royalties that were owed to the rights holder were collected directly back to CD Baby and then paid to you. So 50% to the rights holder was being registered by CD Baby, getting collected by CD Baby, then getting paid to you in your CD Baby account. But the artist side was never being collected by them. So you have to go collect your artist side regardless if you're an independent singer songwriter. CD Baby has recently changed how they do things, and now Sound Exchange registration is a part of what they call their Boost offering. CD Baby offers Boost, where they'll register it with the MLC for you, they'll register it with Sound Exchange, again, just the master side to Sound Exchange. They'll do those things for you for an extra fee. Because you can't collect the artist side through CD Baby, you have to go have an account and collect the artist side through Sound Exchange directly. Why not collect both sides? Because CD Baby is going to take a small commission for collecting that on your behalf, 15%. So I say you might as well go claim both halves and get it all if you're going to create an account anyway. And we just finished up a video with Philip doing a song trust sign up, which will do the registrations with the MLC for you. So these videos in part are basically to allow you to collect all your royalties as much as you can without using CD Baby's boost feature. There's nothing wrong with their boost feature. It's just slightly incomplete because it doesn't quite handle your global registration stuff the way that SongTrust will. That's in another video, but you can check that out. This is specifically for Sound Exchange. I think we've covered the basics to get going. So what we're going to find here is that some of Philip's songs are going to be in the Sound Exchange database, the ones that were pre the boost switch with CD Baby. CD Baby is going to be collecting the master half on that. And then the newer ones aren't. So we need to get him signed up with Sound Exchange and collecting both halves. So first thing you do is head to soundexchange.com slash register, and you will show up to this screen. Click register and get started. You have a couple options. You can update an existing account if you needed to change something. If you're a session musician trying to claim that 5% non featured artist share. This is a specific account for those. Highly unlikely, probably not for you. So most everyone just click here to start. Who are you registering? So the first thing that you have to kind of understand about Sound Exchange, you're going to create an account and then under that account you have registrants. And that registrant might just be you as a songwriter. In Philip's case, that's going to be the case. But again, you can kind of have an account that would be a band account. And so the registrant might be the band. And then the band might be claiming multiple performers and multiple rights owners as well. You have to think through how you want to create your accounts. And I talk about this in the earlier part of my royalty videos, that a big part of getting your royalties registered is first deciding, you know, who owns what, making sure you, you know who owns the song, who owns the master, what all those splits are. 
but then additionally figuring out how you want to even set up your accounts. When you're a solo singer-songwriter who owns 100% of both sides, the song and the master, it's simple. There's only one choice. You have an account with everybody. But when you're in a band, you now have to decide, well, do we want one account that collects all the band royalties or do we each individually want an account? And there's pros and cons to each. You can reference those earlier videos to go over that. I'm not going to go over it right now, but for this case, it is just Philip. So we can select yourself. And then what are you registering as? A performer, a sound recording copyright owner, or both? Again, if you wrote the song and you own the master, then you, you want to register as both. If for some reason you're a performer on something, but you don't own the master, then just performer or vice versa. You know, maybe if you were a, a record label, then you might be registering only as the sound recording copyright owner. This tutorial is for independent musicians, so 99% of the time is going to be both. This is where we put in the contact info, typical account registration. We're going to let Philip get all this filled out. Once you've added all your personal information and verified your identity, you're led to this screen, which they're asking for performer names. Do you record as a solo artist? Do you record as a member of any bands? And adding your artist names here rather than your actual name. So Philip's solo artist name is his name. And no band names, No band right? names. So Correct. we're just gonna add the one here. But if you're in both, you can add those. With the band, they're gonna ask what percentage of royalties do you claim and if that applies to all recordings of this band. You can answer those questions and it'll have different prompts depending on your answer, but save and continue. For the sound recording copyright owner information, are you a company? Are you an individual? In Philip's case, it's an individual, which it defaults to. So do you have any record label? You can put that in here too if you need, otherwise you can just leave it blank. And again, asking for percentages, he is 100%, save and continue. Who will be accepting payment? Philip as well. They're gonna make you fill out your tax information just like Song Trust and BMI and everywhere else. Yep. You have to go through that. Okay, we got through entering all of the tax information for Philip. One thing you'll run into is if you wanna set up direct deposit, you have to upload a voided check. So if that's a barrier, you can always go switch to having them just mail you a check rather than doing direct deposit at this moment. Okay, once you're on this registration page, they just inform you that they're also going to now be collecting internationally for you, which is something that's sort of developing with Sound Exchange, collecting more royalties on your behalf. But essentially, you can just scroll down and you're going to enter your signature to be a member of Sound Exchange, both as a performer, as the artist, and as the rights owner for the copyrights. We've been opting into that all the way through, so now it's just confirming that you're okay with being a member on both sides. Philip has successfully completed his Sound Exchange Direct membership. So you can print or save it here. No real need to do that. This is where you need to enter a little bit more information to allow Sound Exchange to collect your international royalties. They have agreements with other organizations around the world because every country has different royalty laws and they are trying to collect more of the international royalties that are not being collected by these other organizations. I believe that part of this is neighboring rights that they're starting to try to collect, which is royalties that are paid for when your song is played on the radio, like the old school radio. In the United States, only the songwriters are paid for those royalties. That's through your PRO, ASCAP or BMI. There's no royalties generated on the master side, but internationally there are, and they're called neighboring rights. And I believe that's what is going on, that Sound Exchange is starting to collect the neighboring rights from certain organizations internationally and then paying them uh, back too. So that would be if, if you're played on actual old school radio in Europe or something like that. So here it's got everybody defaulted, Philip's performer side and the rights order side to have Sound Exchange collect all territories. Yes, just keep that the same and again, agree with your signature. Okay, so now we gave Sound Exchange the right to collect all international royalties on Philip's behalf as well. New registrations generally take 30 business days, yada, yada, yada. Okay, so we're registered at this point, we're registered with Sound Exchange, but not with Sound Exchange Direct, which is your actual online portal. So we actually just tried signing in thinking that, you know, that's what we had just done. But right here in small print, it says, 
you know, if you're registered with Sound Exchange but have not yet set up access to Sound Exchange Direct, then you have to join that still. So I just wanted to point that out because that confused us as well. Go ahead, Philip. Okay, we just got Philip signed up with Sound Exchange Direct. Now, this was a little bit more complicated than I think we anticipated, so I'm just going to give a brief little uh, history of what happened, which is we finished signing up Philip with Sound Exchange and then went to log in, and it seemed like there was no account there. So there's sort of two things. There's Sound Exchange becoming a member, and then there's creating an online portal with Sound Exchange Direct. And what happened is when we went to the to the login information, we ultimately needed to say join, and then we used the same password that we used to create the membership, and just had to wait a, a while for it to come through. It it took I don't know five ten minutes mm -hmm. to actually show up in his email, and then that link allowed him to finish setting up his actual Sound Exchange Direct online portal. So if you have problems with that, they do have an email there for customer support. There's a number. We tried calling the number and no one answered, so can't necessarily recommend that. But eventually, a, a confirmation link did come yep. and we were able to set this up. But just a heads up that it might be a little delayed. Yeah. Once you get logged into Sound Exchange Direct, you can start actually getting your songs registered or claimed. So this is the dashboard and it's got one listed registrant, which is Philip's actual name, that's what he used, but you might have your band name here or something else. And then you have to finish getting everything enrolled and then go start claiming your royalties. And we'll walk through that. Let's go to the membership status first. This lists all the registrants that are in this account, which is just the one. And then you need to update these mandates, essentially. It's asking us to also authorize the Audio Home Recording Act. I would just click and roll on all this stuff. Collecting worldwide. This mandate we've already done. Mm -hmm. It's current as of today. So uh, no need to update okay. anything there. This was just if you want them to stop collecting international royalties. Your membership date's here. So everything should be good to go. And this is where you can start to add if you had a band account, if you were going to add multiple performers or things like that, again, in this case, you can just select the section is accurate and complete and move forward. All right, so you've got your registrant info, which is mm -hmm. your yourself. And then you can go to my catalog and go to search and claim. This is where you can see yourself listed. And then you have two options. You can claim stuff as the artist, that 45% of royalties, and you can claim stuff as the rights owner. So in Philip's case, he's both. We're gonna claim both. So let's start with one that is not registered. So one of your newer ones that wouldn't have been reported to Sound Exchange at all, which is your EP, and, right? Yeah, anything off the EP. Okay, so let's start by claiming as an artist. It's got you listed as a performer here. It's just reviewing. That works. Great. And we're going to search for recordings. So again, this is really got to happen after it's already been released. Not like the day after it's been released. You know, these databases take some time to propagate. So wait a few weeks. The song's out. This has been out for a little while now. Mm -hmm. So we can search this database and his stuff should show up. So we're going to put his artist name in. And here they are. So we've got his stuff. These first yep. three are him. And then there's a bunch of other people with similar names that are not him, right? So you got to sort through this. There's 1,700 results. Now, you can narrow the search by saying exact match. And these three show up. Should be more, but this is not uncommon. Mm -hmm. This is why you've got to do this stuff on your own. You can also enter in ISRC codes, album names, things like that to help. And so you might just need to keep narrowing search results down. But let's start with these three since they do show up. We're going to continue to organize claims. Now we're doing an artist claim right now. Keep that in mind. The first thing you're going to do is add each one of these songs to what they call a lineup. And this is because if you're in a band, for instance, and you've got 10 songs and three of the songs one person wrote, three of the songs another person wrote, three of the songs were split evenly and one song was 
just three of the four members or something, mm-hmm. right? They're all different split agreements. Mm-hmm. What you can do is say, well, this song belongs on lineup number one, which was all Philip. And this song, it should be on a new lineup called lineup number two, which was 50-50 with the rest of the members and so on. It's just kind of a bulk registration tool so that you could quickly say, these 10 songs are going to be 100% this person, and these 10 songs are going to be 50-50 these two people, and so on. Again, in this case, things are simple. They're all the same split, so they can all go on the same lineup. So we're going to add them all to lineup one, and then we're going to go to claim. And we're now going to put Philip's percentage at 100 for the artist share. The artist name, you need to have the actual artist name. Philip, if you're using some other name besides your name, then put the real artist name in. For Philip, he does use his own name. Click that it's all good. Review the claims. Looks great. Submit and those are gonna be processing. Mm -hmm. Let's go back to search and claim and now do it on the rights owner side. The same three are in this database, so we're gonna go claim those. Kind of the similar thing where you need to put in the percentage of the master that you own. So again, if you're in a band then, and this is a band account, maybe the band is gonna claim 100%, but if everybody has their own uh, sound exchange accounts because maybe some people have side projects or other bands then in your account you would say well I'm I own 25% of the rights half and I own 25% of the artist half whatever your splits are it's important to have that information before you even go do this the other thing you have to do here is select your date range perpetuity is forever mm-hmm. I don't know if we have to put an inception date we're going to find out here yeah, you can just put a day that is whenever it released or you know slightly before that. They came out last fall. Yeah, we'll just go back to like October October first, twenty twenty three. Yeah. Okay, so we'll do that for all of these. Okay, you just review your information, making sure all that makes sense. Submit claims, and there you go. Okay, but what about the songs that didn't show up? Right, that's where you can go into your catalog here and okay <laughs> we, we paused the video because we ran into another little weird thing though I'll just let you know which so we, we claimed we searched the database we claimed the artist side and the master side for the three songs that showed up in the database but yep. there should be others right? right there are some that are not in this database the ones that got reported probably got reported from CD baby yep which is interesting because there was only three and on that EP there's how many well, two were from the EP. One was a separate and release, was a and seven. then there were two, two other ones that weren't. That's the thing. That's why you got to check all this stuff. So, in any case, you can submit your own recordings. For some reason, when we when I went to where it would normally be, this just wasn't showing up. So, if that happened to you, all we did was log him out and log him back in, and it was back. <laughs> so, I don't know why. Uh, I just want to throw that out there if, if you're following along and you're like, I don't see where submit recordings is. Just log out, log back in, and hopefully it's there. But first we went to search and claim, looked in the database for anything that was existing and just put in our claims. Now we're going to go to submit recordings. So if these songs are not in the database, this is what you have to do. And we're going to add a recording. And then there's all this information. So artist name, which one do you want to do first? Uh, let's do melatonin. All right. So this is where you're going to need to get your ISRC number. You can look it up. If you Google ISRC finder, it's an easy way. Or you can go back to your distributor. We'll use ISRC finder this time okay. just to show people another way that this can happen. Well, there it is. Yep. Grab that. Put in the ISRC number. Version, it's not required, um, but if it was like club mix or mm-hmm. radio mix or whatever, Different that's edit. where you might put that down. Again, these things aren't required, but do what you can. At this point, you could put Song Trust down as your publisher, uh, even though it hasn't gone through yet. Again, it's not required, so you could also just leave it blank. ISWC count, if you have that, you can throw that in. We're going to skip past that for now. Composers is... Philip again. 
countries of first release, copyright owner, country, or nationality. A lot of this stuff is just for tax implications. Um, basis of claim, copyright owner. Authorized collection designee if you were collecting for somebody else. Mm -hmm. But again, most of the time that's not going to be the case. Percentage claimed, 100%. Rights begin. Let's do inception. Yeah. It's fine. Got it. Rights end, perpetuity. Territories of collection worldwide. And then this is where we're going to match up the releases. So what we've done so far is we've got this recording, recording entry number one, recording claim information. This is still all for the same thing. So we're going to do fill up again here. This was on an EP called Nocturne. The UPC... We're going to need to look up in CD Baby. This is the UPC right here. The label, Philip just self released. Yep. So for the release label, you can just use your artist name if you're not signed to a label. It's fine. Release date again was 9 29 23. We're putting in our claim. So this is. Putting in a claim as the rights owner, I think, primarily. Mm -hmm. um, once this gets processed, you'll probably have to go back and claim the artist side as well. Right. But now you can do this in bulk, too. So if you have a bunch of these that you need to do, we just did one song at a time. But I do believe there is ways to import it via a spreadsheet and that sort of thing. You can go look at their template here if you want to do that. This all looks good. Go to top. We're going to hit submit. And now we've put that in their database and the rights owner half will be claimed once that all finishes processing. I'm pretty sure we'll have to go back and do the artist side too. Yeah. And you would just do that again and again and again. We're not gonna do that for all of them. Okay. The only other thing I wanna go over here quick is that if you find after, let's, let's say you claim some, and for instance, Intensify, that one, was distributed by CD Baby. Mm -hmm. That's in the database already because CD Baby put it there. And they're likely, if we go back into CD Baby here and we go to Intensify, let's look here. And we look at the distribution and the partner delivery. Again, I think, yeah, yep. see, they delivered it to Sound Exchange, which is why it's there. And I bet the other two are there because they were released as singles, right? Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah, and, and they the were released ones. as singles, so that's why they were in the Sound Exchange database. They don't do this anymore, but if you have old stuff and you notice it's in the database, what's going to happen here in a few days is you're going to get an email that says there's a disputed claim on these, and that CD baby is claiming the rights owner share of this because they are they are they distribute it to you, and are collecting on your behalf. But CD Baby's policy is to just relinquish a claim if there's a dispute. So don't worry. When that email comes from SoundExchange saying there's a disputed claim on these three songs, just say okay and yep. just give it time. Eventually CD Baby will relinquish their claim and it will fully become yours. Now, if they're in the database and CD Baby's collecting on them, you could say, fine, I'll just yeah. let them collect. It'll keep going into CD Baby and I'll just claim the artist side. Okay. Okay. You have that choice if you'd like to do that. But I would recommend for Sound Exchange to claim all of it because you're just going to collect slightly more royalties. Might as well. You're in there doing it. It's easy. It just takes a little bit of time. Yeah. That's the in and out of getting these all done, you just to recap a little bit here for people, because it's kind of confusing, you're going to have a registrant that's going to be your your name, your band name, something like that. It could literally be anything you want it to be. The registrant is not necessarily the copyright owner. It's not necessarily the artist. You can separate these things, which gets a little confusing. I would use your name in most cases. And then when you go to a catalog, you can start by searching and claiming, just seeing what's in their database already. You have to claim it once as the rights owner, which is the same name as the registrant. That's why things get a little confusing, but then also claim it as the artist. If you've got multiple artist names, you can add more performers here. If it's not in the database, that's where you want to go to submit recordings and fill out that form with all the relevant information to get that recording in the database. 
You can look at your submission history. Eventually the associated recordings are gonna start showing up here as they get cleared. And then once you have all your payment information, all that kind of stuff set up, you'll see royalties come in if they're generated. Awesome. All right, I think that wraps up our sound exchange video. I hope this was helpful to people. Reach out if you have other questions and I'll try to answer them. Thanks for watching.